And we have a standing call to order language that I'm going to read each time. We're trying to make everything as easy and formalized as we can. All those present are reminded to please silence their cell phones or place them on vibrate. And prior to speaking, please be recognized by the chair. All those in attendance who are recording this meeting in any format are requested to identify themselves now to the chair at this time. It is also noted that Northampton Community Television is recording this meeting. Do we have to smile for the camera? <laughs> nope. Oh, good. Not required. Oh, yeah. There's no one here from the public. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like we have anybody here from the public for the public session, so we'll skip over that. And we also have the, um, the minutes, which um, if you notice the minutes that you have in front of you, there are some changes that were made, and we'd like to vote on them with these changes in red. You can see the person that proofed them got them to Linda after she had already typed them all up. So um, if everybody's okay with these changes, we can... Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the, uh, the December 13th meeting. All those in favor? So I move it. So moved. Oh, so <coughs> okay. All those second. in favor? Oh, second. Bob second. All Bob second. So. I'm going to stop being nervous. Okay. Yeah. But I'll give a minute so people can review it because the red part is something that people are just seeing now. At this meet, at this time. Okay, can we take a vote on these? All those in favor of approving these minutes? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, so there the minutes are, have been approved. One thing I've got to say is today is January 10th, 2019. For this meeting, I should have said the date. I should put that on the top of my little <laughs> intro. What day is today? Okay. So I'm going to start off by just saying a little thing that um, I developed after hearing concerns from the <coughs> council members as to the meeting protocol and the length. Um, I want to speak to changes that we are proposing to make to these meetings. To make these meetings orderly, purposeful, concise, and with visionary goals. So I want to remind members to please read all notes sent to you beforehand raise your hand and be recognized by the chair. And when someone is speaking, to please actively listen to those and try not to be reactionary to, to people speaking. And um, random thoughts and questions um, I'll ask to be held to the new business or to next month's agenda. We can put it on it. And, um, and I also want to encourage that everyone speak. Um, and I might even be going around the room. You can abstain from speaking, but I do would like I would like to have people, everybody, have a say here and say what they need to say on different topics that we'll discuss. And we have been talking in past meetings that this isn't um, so much a board as an advisory board. We don't actually make policy for the senior center. We advise the the employees of the senior center, as well as the mayor, of what we would suggest. And they bring ideas to us of, as to what they want to hear our opinions and on and everything. So I'm going to try to not call us a board anymore, but to call us a council. <laughs> and um, as a council, we are the voice of the senior community here in Northampton. And I, I would like to um, remind people to engage those people that you meet that are part of the senior community in Northampton and get their opinions and not just come here with your opinions or your spontaneous opinions of things that happen here. And we'd like to encourage, we'll speak a little bit 
later about joining focus groups and uh, joining volunteer um, opportunities here at the Senior Center, which helps you get to know what is working and what isn't and what you want to bring, what people want to tell you as far as that being an ambassador while you're out there for the seniors. And um, that also includes modeling conduct for, um, for people. I overheard someone at the desk today say something about the, the code of conduct and that they felt like, gee, nobody misbehaves here. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> I didn't say anything, but, but OK, that's an interesting observation. So. It's good that I don't feel that way. <laughs> so with that said, we can move on to Dennis. Are we going next to you on the? Uh, sure, I can just make the mask if you want me to. Um, one of the things that um, Marie and Kim and Jerry and I, Jerry and I are working on is um, a council member like guide or packet. The Executive Office of Elder Affairs, one that we have, is so general, so um, many things that don't apply to us because it, it's for cities, it's for towns, it's for communities with 900 people with no senior center, no office staff to cities like us or even bigger than us who have um, even in larger centers. So what we've been working on, and, and Marie had spoken a few months ago about, was a guide for new members to the council or, you know, old members as well, I suppose, or long-term members, um, that is more specific to actually Northampton about what is our role um, and putting things together. So we, we've got as far as um, getting this index together. So it doesn't mean anything to you too much right now. But basically, the guide, we're, we're going to put it like in a little three ring, I don't know whether it's a binder or a little you know, sort of packet so that everybody will have one. So it'll talk about what the roles and responsibilities are as a member of the Northampton Council on Aging. And then we're developing the standard called meeting order language like they do at city council, like they do at other boards and commissions where, you know, this is what we, you know, announcing to the public about cell phones and, you know, recording. Um, we're coming up with the standard agenda form format so that whether or not there's actually an item on it, that there will always be a place for something. And to encourage council members, if you have something, that you want to have discussed on the agenda, you know, just email it to Jerry Ann or to Marie, and you can make sure that they get it on the um, agenda if it, isn't, if it isn't already on there. And then it'll include the things that we've already gone over in the governing documents, like the bylaws, the code of conduct, the MGL enabling statute, the administrative code, the council matrix. We're going to work on a flow chart, so I'm adding a flow chart. And then it'll just have other things on it that the city clerk has partially given us um, under the open meeting law and the conflict of interest law. But there are a few other things that, that we did some research on so that we understand that a little bit better, the Margaret's rules. And so pretty much that'll have all of the stuff that we need to know about what it is that we do and how we're supposed to be doing it to be in compliance with things. So hopefully that'll be ready by next um, month as we gather the rest of the materials and finish writing things. So that should make it a lot easier for people joining um, um, and having an outline as to you know, what's to be expected and how, to, how does it work kind of thing. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Okay, Marie, you're up. Yeah. Hi. Um, can we, once it's ready, be sure that whether it's next month that we devote an ample amount of time on the agenda to review it all so we don't just get it? Yeah, hopefully so we, we can get it. it to everybody ahead of time. That'd be great. But so whether, whatever. Yeah, whether it's by mail or, you know, slow mail or because not everybody checks email. Um, but hopefully, you know, once we get the yeah, once we have it, have a chance to yeah. put it yeah. in. Would it, relevant yeah, would it work for us to just let everyone know that it's ready and you can pick it up? Because I think most people come here occasionally. Okay, because we can we can get it all compiled and you can just compile it. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Any other questions about what Dennis said? Another one of these. Um, well, one thing I'm not sure that this is reflected in the we already passed them in the index or not, but I just thought it might be useful for me to include sort of a schedule of like the city when the city asks for my budget when I might be reporting to you on things, mm -hmm. so that you kind of know what's coming up, like what what's being asked of me as a director from the city. And so there's sort of a timeline about things that we discuss and what time of year. Um, I think that there are things that programmatically are sort of seasonal or traditional that we do each, you know, in certain months. And um, those, I mean, we, we, we still haven't quite mapped that all out for ourselves even. We're sort of looking at that. But um, I think as people get more involved in sort of looking at our programming and things like that, you'll get a sense of like the, the seasons of, of the senior center programming even, um, that, we, that we have sort of certain times we do certain things. But. Um, oh, and the next thing, Elder Vision and Highland Valley representative roles. Um, so we were actually, going to take these off of the agenda and have them be when there's something to report that it be added because my understanding is that the representative from Highland Valley um, it's not really there might be occasionally things that you might report to the board but um, it's really that we we might want to say things to Highland Valley that we might want you to bring back to them and I kind of, and I think that um, there are a lot. That it takes up some time, and it, it you're, you're, you might be older vision too, reporting on things that um, aren't really necessary to this meeting. But if we want to send something to ask Elder Vision or Highland Valley about, that's sort of the voice, the voice of the board who's speaking for the community. Um, that kind of makes more sense. I think, but I, mm -hmm. I think Kathy, you had you were going to go back to the yeah, board. I did, and that's what, I don't know if you want when you want to report. Do you want me to talk about it now? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be the, you know the role with Highland Valley or relationship. But first of all, I'll preface that just to say that Alan, I chatted with him, and everybody knows who Alan is. Nope. Alan is the well, yeah. that is the is the executive of um, I mean the board of um, the executive officer, you know the the director of Highland Valley. And um, basically, Highland Valley is um, the relationship. I mean, Highland Valley, as you, I don't know if you know, but it, it serves two functions. It's both the area agency on aging, and it's also the aging service access point. Okay. And basically, the difference between these two bodies are um, is that a AAA, the aging a AAA or the area agency on aging, gets federal funds. It's under federal funding. No, it's myself in preparation. So, um, but uh, and then the ASAP is through the Mass uh, Executive Office of Local Affairs, and most of the money comes through the state for that part of the um, the funding. But the, it's considered it's a private, not for profit agency. And an ASAP used to be the Home Care Corporation. You may have heard of that years ago, but that used to be what the, the title was. And basically, you know, there's different functions, different roles, different responsibilities because of the funding sources. But um, the COA, I mean, the relationship between the um, COAs, uh, which are municipal um, organizations, uh, is just that it's, it's just the connecting. You have no Highland Valley, I think part of the whole thing was to have representatives, representatives from each of the towns that Highland Valley um, is responsible for on onto their, their board of directors. But it's run like a regular, a not-for-profit board of directors. You know, we have, in fact, when we were talking about a, a booklet, we have one this thick for um, board members that we have to kind of adhere to. And um, and we don't, you know, because it is a not-for-profit, that, um, you know, it's not all for, um, you know, there's a lot of information um, 
information that goes on to me that's not um, for public, not, I mean, not for public um, um, distribution. So there's a lot of things that does go, do, do go on at these board meetings, but I mean, I agree with you, Marie, that the whole purpose, I don't need to be reporting back what what's going on is just in terms of if you have questions to get to me. But if anybody wants, Alan can come to these, one of these meetings and talk about the relationship between the um, Highland Valley and the local council meetings. Yeah, so a good example of what the board might bring up, uh, it, well, often in Williamsburg, what was brought up was that um, seniors would complain at lunch about yeah. the sodium content in the meals and that was often something that would be asked, could the board please ask Highland Valley to do something about this? And of course, um, they're limited by using commodities and right. so they have a hard time mm -hmm. doing that. But, mm -hmm. but the elders in the community bringing information right. to the board mm -hmm. or a complaint or whatever, mm -hmm. that the board can actually then ask right. their representative to mm -hmm. take that back to the board at Highland mm -hmm. Valley. And that's very that's a very useful yeah yeah and you know you remember I mean and you know we get reports from the nutrition sites all the time the peas were too hard this was too good you know I mean we get a lot of things from all, all the um, areas so I mean and, but you're right I mean it, it has commodities it has to work with but they also have a, a, a registered dietitian who does look over the menu so to be aware of that which is um, and it's important that people know what the sodium content and carb carb Content is for for foods. Yeah, and that might come up for someone who's going mm -hmm. to the meal site at Savo right. House, but mm -hmm. we're not serving those meals. But it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that someone from Savo House couldn't ask our board to do something oh, of about it. Yeah, like so. That's an example of right. sort of how mm -hmm. the board members are mm -hmm. ambassadors for aging services mm -hmm. um, because right. they're they're a partner that mm -hmm. we want to work with. Right. Gene? Um, one of the things, you know, to, to go back to the guide for the new council members, one of the things I think would be helpful is to have, you know, just a, a, maybe as an addendum, but an understanding about what these, like, what Elder Vision mm -hmm. is and what Highland Valley yes. is and what, how, what the relationship is with the Council of the Aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. The other thing that, you know, preparation, the um, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, Alice Bond, who, by the way, is retired, is leaving, um, is, um, you know, the, I access. She has a report that she does every year, and it's, it, it was it kind of detailed a lot of the information. It's very thick, but you know, I mean, I'd be willing to kind of help write out something like that if anybody wants me to do that for our board manual. Dennis, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to piggyback on what you said. Number one, then I have a question: Is um, I, I agree? It seems like. Highland Valley reporting back to us on their board doesn't really seem appropriate because it doesn't really right. it doesn't really fit. So that makes sense to me, and it seems to me if unless our Highland Valley representative has something that Highland Valley wants to bring back to the council, which is under the standard mm -hmm. format, then you could ask to be on the right. agenda or if we have things to take back to Highland Valley. Right. And then my question was since I don't fully understand Highland Valley and I can do my own research, um, but um, is there, do, does the senior center or the senior services department do anything that duplicates Highland Valley or? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we, we do get funding through Highland mm -hmm. Valley. Um, yeah. Our medical rights program is funded so through Highland Valley. Through that. Yeah, yeah, so it's through that. Yeah, so Title three funding. Um, so every, you're the service agent for what they're going to fund to provide a Right, right. Service. The Title three funds come through. Come through you. Yes, yes. And the okay. time goes to different entities, including the Council on Aging. So that's, you know, now on a two-year cycle. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, you know, um, EOEA, the state mm -hmm. funnels money down to the ASAPs and they um, they then distribute that money and it's not always just COAs that get that money yeah, but then good. we so that we can build upon our community to, mm -hmm. to make programs that serve people's needs because right. they can't do it all but they do have a lot of programs that are you know duplicating needs because they're you know, like Northampton Neighbors is filling a need that, right. no, because there's a, a tremendous need. need. 
Mm -hmm. um, but and they do. ASAP means area service access point. Yeah. Which means. It means that. Sorry. Good question. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm sorry for being dense, but I'm well, like, that's okay. I don't get it. I mean, I had to. I mean, I've been asking now, well, what's the difference between a triple A and an ASAP? You know, I mean, I didn't even know that. Area service access, agents access, access point. point. And so there's it's one in just each. in terms of it's a state, you know, the every there's one in have different areas in and terms they have of a certain number of yep, towns, towns that, that Highland Valley is exactly. responsible for. Right, exactly. there's Berkshire County has one, Franklin County so has West one. Mass Elder Care. So who's Northampton's ASAP? Highland Valley. Oh, 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 you're an ASAP. Okay. Oh, Highland Valley, not me. <laughs> so <laughs> ASAP are the yes. Point of access is yeah. actually an umbrella agency. Yeah. Well, it's that like it covers a, a geographical area. Correct. It's just like okay. DDS and, and yeah. DMR. Yeah. This whole thing is, uh, but it's an odd. Well, yeah. so services we can't provide, right. like home care, ombudsman, um, and it's federal. Um, yeah. Well, and they state. federal and fed, state. Yeah. Federal and state. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Can you get us a fact sheet? Oh. Highland Valley fact sheet. Sure. Of, it, okay. So all these questions, mm. yeah. what the but services are, that would be that's really helpful. And who's eligible, because you know, a majority of the services are income-based mm. Yes. for what they do. Right. So and can, that's protective services as well, I just right. want to say that, because um, there is a 800 number now, but for this area, if there is a protective services issue, mm -hmm. that's where you would call to report it, unless you call the 800 number um, so. Elder abuse. There's there's a lot of them. Um, I mean, I kind of looked it up. The the um, triple A. I mean, there's support service. They assess needs. There's service planning. The home and community based waiver service. Ombudsman. Transportation. They fund where the ASAPs fund. Um, the um, that's okay, Kathy. Yeah, I know. We don't need to know that. that but, yeah. but I'm just saying. That's just, should we go on to Elder Vision just to speak about that a minute? Yeah, I could uh, uh, keep, keep you up to date each each month as to what you, what we've given you for expenditures. I don't I don't think that's necessary. Okay. okay. Um, I think that that's what you report to your Elder Vision board, okay. and that really your role is to take things back from this board to Elder Vision. Mm -hmm. So there's a request from the board to fundraise for this need. Um, yeah, I think it. I think that the, along the way, things just you know sort of like we're over reporting, you know, it kind of. Um, and I think that it will free up a little time for us to really focus on other things. Um, and there are some things that um, get reported that we don't need. We don't need to report to the public. Um, and on we this may have requests of yeah. elder vision that we want to include that, you know. The senior center has a request that's yes. really they request funds frequently right yeah. and so we might have a request that we must right if the board says we you know if you all have an idea that you really think that we need to do and the city doesn't have the funding then that would be a request that could come up here and it could go on the agenda and then if there is something that's going on with elder vision that is very important for the board to know that could go on the agenda but i don't think we need to have a standing agenda item where reports are made um, where you're covering things that you actually report to that board. So I'll check with you before the next meeting as to whether I have you have anything or I have anything we should put on that. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, let's move on to Kim's report. All right, thanks. I just wanted to give you an update on our volunteer recruitment efforts at this point. We are currently training two new reception volunteers, which I'm excited to share. Uh, also training a new coffee shop volunteer. So slowly but surely we're getting some new volunteers on board on, in some of those critical areas. Uh, we still, uh, we also are uh, currently training a medical transportation driver as well. So that's a, another uh, big area that we were looking for some help in. <coughs> still looking for some additional coffee shop help as well as dispatch, bistro. Uh, what I'm going to do on uh, Thursday, February 7th from 11 to 12 is, is just kind of have a volunteer uh, recruitment table in the lobby. Just to make myself very visible, being able to talk to people. Thursdays are a very busy day here uh, between the programming that we have as well as the lunch that we serve. So I think that'll just be a great way to, to have myself in a very visible spot to continue to talk about the volunteer opportunities that we do have and 
hopefully could you say that date again sure i'd be happy to thursday february 7th from 11 to 12 so i'll do that right before the lunch hour also wanted to give you an update on two focus groups that were held for the first time this week first of all the arts and culture focus group uh, was held uh, this Wednesday, there were five people that attended, and there are at least four other people that were interested, but that particular day and time did not work. Um, the purpose of that group is really to, uh, what we did is kind of brainstormed and shared feedback of, of, about our current programming, uh, what's working, maybe some areas where we need to improve, and also what are, what are some programming opportunities that we don't currently offer that would be great to have. So kind of what's that one thing you would love to attend here, <laughs> but it's not on the calendar yet? Um, and then we also followed that up with a little bit of discussion with each of those wishes, each of those places where there's still a need. There's a who behind that and who's going to help make that happen. And so that group's going to help take a look whether it's the people in that group or whether they know somebody that wants to volunteer, kind of what's a good team approach in order to address some of those needs and those open areas of programming. Um, we will have another meeting of that group in February. We haven't determined the date yet. I still have to check in with a few people to see what works best. Uh, but it sounds like Wednesdays will be good and I'll forward you an email when we know that date. I um, also met today with a movie committee. It's a small group of people, three attended, but there's also at least three more additional people that would like to attend that group that just couldn't make it today. And they're gonna help with our movie selections, um, especially now that the movies are on a weekly basis, we need just that many more movies. <laughs> um, and they're gonna help with everything from selecting those movies to possibly helping us get those movies in the building, um, to providing some advertising about those movies as well, um, as well as surveys and making sure that, that people are happy with the movie selections that we're showing. So we've got a good group of people that want to help with that process as well. Uh, that group is going to meet the last Thursday of the month, so the next meeting for them is January 31st. Uh, that is also a Thursday, and that's going to be at 12.30, just prior to the movie. Uh, that will give us a chance to confirm and solidify the movies for the upcoming month and get them submitted before the Chronicle goes to print. And Kim, do you want to invite people here if they'd like to join Either your groups? Either one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's already some, some folks in the room that, that attended the Arts and Cultural Group um, movie committee as well. So mm -hmm. yes, you're more than welcome to join us for either one of those. And we'll, we may, we may um, some subgroups of, I mean, right. it might split off into different categories because I think that really what we're trying to do is make sure that we have programming that appeals to people here. And if you have ideas and you're, you say, you know, I wish we had more dance, which I think we should have, um, and you want to help spearheads getting more dance here, then we would maybe then break into groups of people who are, who are um, interested in those topics so that we can then start to use your networking abilities like if you know people in the, the field of dance who might teach here things like that like so we can just sort of build on that that kind of programming and we're meeting the needs that if you're interested probably other people are too Dennis? Um, do people like uh, programs that like were successful that necessarily aren't on a regular basis do people go to you and ask, can we have this again? And then you schedule them again? Is, is that how it works? Or That certainly is, is the case, where people have appreciated a program and they ask to see if we can schedule it again. Um, some of that also gets monitored through our sign-up sheets. So uh, for example, like the ukulele class, the class size filled up and then we Did had a long wait mind? list and then yeah and then we totally <laughs> then go back to that that's what i was going to sign up for for so, 80 bucks there you go and i can go. play tiptoe through the tulips i'm like <laughs> sign me up so so some but of it's it, filled yeah, up. so some of it is very informal conversation uh, that you have either by phone or email or face to face and others are very visible very visible need through mm -hmm. sign up sheets mm -hmm. and and wait lists that suddenly appear for those popular so classes. So I should see you for the wait list? There we go. We so just yeah. added two more just, classes. Because so. uh, yeah. I'm way part of it, too. <laughs> well, there's a second one overlapping into February, and oh. there's another one in March. And another example is the SCARF um, group. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. That filled up right away. They had another one right away. That right. filled up right away. So that's probably another one that's going to be ongoing, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Well, and also sometimes it's that we can't get that instructor backed back oh. and so sometimes it really is very dependent programming can be very dependent on finding someone to facilitate that happening again um, if we if we have repeat 
volunteers um, or instructors um, and they are willing to keep doing it, then it becomes a standing program. And we love those because <laughs> then we don't have to be constantly recreating, you know, creating more programming. So check with you on the March ukulele. There you go. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm writing that down right now. All right. Now we're going to move on to the director's report. So just to sort of piggyback on that programming, um, we're really, we're really going to be launching a lot of new programming because of the transition, or as part of the transition of the li the library downsizing um, and the old library being converted into a studio. We are going to be adding a lot of classes in there. Um, the fact that there were like almost, you know, there's sort of a lot of competition to get on those lists for the silk scarf painting, like really told us like there's a real desire for more workshops, more creative workshops. Um, and so, and, and that's what we're seeing is that um, things fill up. There are people who, we don't want people to miss out because they're not tech savvy and they didn't, they didn't see the advertising before everyone else who was seeing it through constant contact. So we're trying to balance that, like making sure that people read the information um, in the way that they're acclimated to. Um, so everybody has a chance, and the only way to really do that is to make sure we have enough programming to meet the needs. So that's thus we are adding multiple offerings of things that, have, that are popular. So. Um, and so you'll see a lot more workshops happening in there if you know people who might want to teach a workshop. Um, it can be a one time, it can be a series, it can be a long, you know, standing program. So um, that's what we'll be brainstorming in these focus groups. Um, and um, a lot of that will be coming out in the next Chronicle. So. <coughs> And we have launched the new code of conduct that we voted on last time here. And um, it's people are picking it up at the front desk when they sign in. We're going to be posting it around. Um, and we all need to just be aware that people will have, there'll be an adjustment period where people, there's not a lot of new things on there really. I mean, vaping is probably the only, only real thing that wasn't on there before. Um, we haven't really had a, any of that going on here, but um, you know, we continue to struggle with people smoking too close to the building. Or um, I think that cell phones are one of those things that are hard. But people, it, it doesn't doesn't it just doesn't occur to people often because there's there such use everywhere. But that we're asking people to take their calls into the foyer mm -hmm. or outside. Mm -hmm. um, and then one thing that's not on the code of conduct is that we are, um, but that we are trying to enforce is that there's no food or drink throughout the building except for in the bistro, in the coffee shop, or at an event where we're serving refreshments. Because um, you know people just unpack their lunch in the hall, or they, I mean, we've had a lot of interesting. Um, we've had staff find people with a half gallon of ice cream eating in the lobby. We've had, um, you know, so it becomes very loose. Um, and so I think, um, you know, having bottled water is, is fine. And then if a group is having refreshments, like the game and support group has a potluck once a month, of course, you know, when it's, when it's a, a planned food event, then that's manageable for us. So, you want to call it? Oh, sorry. Who had their hand up first? I, I had a question that you should, I mean, Working in the coffee shop, um, you know, we need to have signs places that, well, for instance, um, when I was working last Friday, you know, gay men, you know, for their their um, get together, they used to bring because it's linoleum in that front room. They bring coffee into there during their meeting. So I had to tell some people not to bring coffee into that room. So it's, uh, I think you need to have signs up to very clear signs for people and make sure people know about it. I, yeah, and I think that that's, that's more of a negotiating with particular groups because like tea, tea and conversation has cookies and tea. Yeah, I mean, I think that when it's part, yeah. right, but when it's part of um, a, a program that's going on, then we just need to have those conversations. Is this going to be a regular part of your group? Yeah. Um, 
Well, I know that they like to come just, they, they contribute to the car, they buy things from there and bring it in there, but I think, you know, that, I mean, a lot of people said they just don't buy it, but will just kind of go to their meeting and stuff, so just just to be aware of that, um, that and making sure that they know that. Right, yeah, we will be we will be letting the groups know. Yeah, because it it's puts some of the volunteers in awkward positions. Well, right, but as a volunteer, especially in the coffee shop, I think that some of the other volunteers have, you know, Kim's been having discussions with them, that we need to remind people. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, and I get that I remind people, but I think, you know, when, I think it should have been told to us as all volunteers that this was coming forth, I mean, rather than word of mouth, to between coffee shop workers. And, and some people knew, some people didn't. It's just right. Well, that's on us because yeah. we're yeah. But there, there are get regardless of how regimented right. we are, mm -hmm. there are always going to be of course people who don't hear or mm -hmm. you know yeah. just have to. We all have to right. work together to mm -hmm. make this. Okay. Yes. Uh, at one time, we had a program uh, for the bistro because this was before we were using the bistro on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, when it was not being used on noon time, people could bring their lunch in there and eat it. And that's why we put the refrigerator and the microwave in there. Is that program still in effect for Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Well, food is allowed in the bistro in the coffee shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, they came so if someone brings their lunch to the building, um, you know, there are people who come here for the day mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and they bring their lunch. We, we want to support that. So mm -hmm. we, if we see someone eating in the upholstered furniture, we're going to say, right. will you please yeah. take your lunch into mm -hmm. these, yeah. one of right. these areas. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the bistro or the coffee shop is available for that. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, and I, I'm not sure if everyone sort of saw the advertisement, but that we've partnered with Triad and that they're um, delivering buckets of sand mm -hmm. to seniors and people are excited about that. We've had a really big <laughs> response. Mm -hmm. um, snow. Yeah, but we haven't had any snow, so. Um, <laughs> because the program. We're sending everybody sand. Waiting for nature. Waiting for nature. Waiting for nature. So, um, we're going to have UMass Nursing Department come back again this year, and this year we'll have two sets of nurses. We'll have the regular students, and then we'll also have advanced students um, doing various things um, weekly here. And if you have ideas about what we're thinking about offering, um, I guess they've done things in the past like this, but doing screening, sort of um, counseling about um, you know, reviewing medications and looking at contraindications, um, looking at, you know, health issues, things like that, so that we're sort of providing those extra services and it also serves the nursing program. Um, and then Cooley Dick in February will be doing their community health assessment here and they're focusing on um, seniors' health. So um, there's various kinds of things going on here where people can get involved in speaking to issues um, you know, that don't necessarily pertain to the senior center itself, but um, are like the climate resiliency stuff that's been going on here too, that um, are important to have the voice of seniors um, involved. So, um, And I should be hearing something soon about my capital improvement request um, and working on the budget for next year. So I'll be reporting back on those things, yeah. What capital um, expenses have you requested? So I put in a request for, I think it was 125000 over the next five years. Um, so the first um, thing for the first year that I was requesting was um, toilets in the bathroom that are higher because they are too low. Mm -hmm. especially for people who have trouble. Um, I, I think the same is true of our furniture. Um, it's hard to, um, sometimes for, for some people, it's, once you get down there, it's hard to get back up. And um, it's better if, I mean, the, the toilets they make now are, are much more conducive for comfort for everybody. So um, that is one thing that I think we'll go through. Um, another thing is um, that I asked for to have an, um, an architect to do a study um, and 
redesign of the way that we use space in the lobby because I feel like our reception area is, it's like, it's like Trump's wall. <laughs> it's almost like when I first came here, I felt like it's a big wall and then we stacked all this stuff on top of it. And so it felt like a really high wall. And I just feel like I really want us to work on how we, how we greet people and how people access information. And um, we're, you know, we're, right now we're thinking about cutting out a notch, another notch in the desk so that there are more places where people can access a receptionist. Um, Kim and I are, you know, working a lot on um, just communications, how we, how we communicate information to people here, and um, because we often have a line, or we hear from people that they don't feel like it's easy to get information um, at the front desk, um, because the phone's ringing and people are waiting, and there's just a lot of chaos. I think we can, we can sort of work on resolving um, by thinking about this and coming you know, coming up in, in this century to, mm -hmm. to with, with digital stuff too. So we're, we're looking at all that stuff. So, and that would then inform how we then, what we would do in the next years with capital improvement funding, so. Okay, so Kathy? Yeah, um, we'd be having with the architect be, be somebody who knows about working with older people because that's really important in terms of lighting and colors, contracts, etc. It's not everybody's trained in that. Yes, okay. of course. Donna? This just popped into my head, but I think uh, it would be wonderful if you could in ask the art department at North <coughs> High School to, uh, if there were students who would like to take a project of how they would look at our space and how things are organized and re revamp in their own minds what they think would work. Because I like I like having um, high school kids around. I, I think the interaction mm. with seniors is very special. And if we could give them a, 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 a sort of special job that maybe is different from their, their basic cur curriculum, then I bet the art department is very highly regarded at the mm. in high school. They might help us out, and it might be very interesting to see what they came up with. Sure. Yeah, we can share that with the architect. And you know what? You have a great voc vocational high school here. You get those toilets. My son is a vocational teacher. He teaches some um, electricity and plumbing up in Vermont. He takes the students a lot of places mm -hmm. to help and donate their time. It's experience right. for them. So they're actually building the new cabinetry for the, the art studio. Um, and they actually built that desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can re rebuild it. Right. Well, we, did, we, did, <laughs> we did talk to Smith Vogue about um, doing some alterations to it, but they, they don't really have time. Um, they're building cabinets off site. And, well, they yeah, build houses we're, too, because I know my son is involved in a whole house. But sometimes they have downtime where they can't do anything else. Putting a few toilets in for plumbing students, that's easy. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'd have to talk to the city because there are all kinds of um, union but issues. But it's a city uh, high school, isn't it? Yeah, I just yeah, I think that that's private. not my department. I don't run central, you know, central services. You just save money. Right. No, I mean, and, and the mayor did suggest that I talk to Smith Folk about cabinets for the art room. So, um, you know, I think that that kind of creative thinking is what yeah saves money but also I, I like you know the intergenerational mm -hmm. piece um, mm -hmm. I think is important I'm, I'm going a little slow with that I think um, I'm working on intergenerational activities that are sort of off-site um, building those and I think that we do though part of our focus groups that can be around that could be a that could be its own focus group and could be around um, what kinds of things people would like to see here that are intergenerational and how would that happen? Like would it happen cert during certain hours or um, like how would it work so that some people who don't want that happening wouldn't feel uncomfortable and that the people who do want it to happen could get their needs met too. Like I think I think there's room for, for everyone to mm -hmm. have programming that suits them. Oh yeah, the so. nurses are a great example mm -hmm. of that. They love the nurses. Yeah, yeah, great. The youth. Dennis? Um, I was just going to a quick question for Bob. 
if the city through the operating or capital budget isn't going to fund things, are there any limitations on what Elder Vision can use um, the money for? The money for? Um, not specifically that I know of. Uh, just whatever the board can vote on. And so if we came up with lots of ideas, but yeah, I've we, got we, lots of money. <laughs> one, of our limitations, one of our limitations is if you can get funding elsewhere, we won't use it. Oh, okay. Uh, I've already run into that with the transportation. Somebody tried to get me to pay for something uh, on the buses, uh, and but they're uh, but you know they're getting transportation funds from that, and they wanted me to pay the bill for a repair on a bus, and I, I handed it back and said no, that is not appropriate. Like, before you get funds for that. Right. But if we were like say, and capital bill, improvements, we wouldn't do because that is a city, the city, the city responsibility. But like, but they uh, we just bought a popcorn machine. Well, I was going to say for the movies, yeah, popcorn. Yeah, so, I mean, or, these, these things can come Or an outdoor picnic area. Well, so that, that is one of the areas I, I, um, yeah. I did request outdoor seating. Um, so there may be things that the city says you can't do that this We can't give you, no. we can't give you that money this year, but, you know, ask again for year sure. two or three, and we may say, we don't want to wait that long. The board yeah. may say, Let's ask our revision so that we can uh, okay. have it sooner. Um, we're we're flexible and pretty friendly. On the whole. Yeah, I just didn't know if there were restrictions like we can't spend it on, uh, you know, I don't know, it's liquor. <laughs> no, I bought liquor. I, 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 I made a text for the one and the other. That's exactly why it's there because there aren't restrictions. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because the city the can. We had wine, and I wrote checks for the wine. So, uh, you know, uh, that's weird. My well, life's it wouldn't be used like for a, another employee to, like, a, a janitor or something like that. It couldn't right. be used yeah, for okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah. It probably but couldn't also, be used for toilets. You know, all these things that yeah. the, city the city is yeah. responsible yeah. for. And labor, you know, unionized labor at the right, city. Yeah. So none of that. Now, uh, as an instance, the uh, senior service is not allowed to give meals out or food to people. They couldn't, uh, Marie couldn't take her staff to dinner. To lunch, mm -hmm. so we pay for that oh, because okay. the city says you can't do that. Right. And right. Uh, I'm not taking people to dinner just so you. Well, I mean, for lunch. <laughs> well, you took them to lunch once. Well, no, I didn't so take anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> we had a staff retreat here where we did some training, and we and we had Elder Vision pay for lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's lunch. Okay, we paid for lunch. <laughs> right? and because the city says we can't, we can't give people food. I don't know why. why but we don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. Oh no. <laughs> Great, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I don't, at this moment, I mean, uh, until I hear more from the city about um, where things are with the capital improvement mm -hmm. request, um, you know, I think, um, you know, we're fiscally sound and, and we are working on building programming and we're, um, you know, I'm still um, working on doing an assessment of, um, you know, our programming that's free, our programming that has fees. Um, you know, I think it's going to take a little time for us to sort of revamp those things. And we're also working on eventually having online payment and pay having people be able to use credit cards here and all those things. But the, all these things take time. Um, so, but a lot of the feedback that we've gotten here or that we get from patrons helps us to know what what people would like or are having issues around or um, so I think it's important you know for us to take that information and keep working towards you know it take it takes a long time in municipality things take a long time um, just because there's so many people who have to be involved in those decisions so um, patience is um, one of those things that we, we always have to ask people to have when we can't always change things right away, um, even though we'd like to. So. Well, I think the direction is the most important thing. We're moving in the direction of it, and we realize speed is not. At least you're moving. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very slow. Yeah, um, well, one thing I was going to say is that um, for February in the Chronicle and in our programming, and um, we, are, we are focusing on, um, I'm not sure how we're going to put 
can do this, but we're going to sort of refer to the code of conduct in there about people. Um, we're, we're thinking of February as sort of um, love and chocolate, and um, we're going to do a lot of features in the Chronicle about um, you know self care of yourself, care of your friends and neighbors, um, relationships, relationships, and um, and so I think that the code of conduct fits well into that. That in order for this to be a place where people feel comfortable and respected um, and welcome, that we all have to follow some guidelines to make that work. Um, and then we will be doing a Valentine's concert. Young at Heart is going to perform and a special luncheon that day. Um, so we're trying to sort of bring some more festive things in the dead of winter that's not quite as bleak as it usually is but um, so all of those kinds of things come have come out of discussions we've had with people around building programming so um, it really make those things are what make these kinds of programs and activities um, it makes this place vibrant but it also is what makes it possible because we don't have all the time and resources to to be working on it, so we really need volunteers to help with that. So I don't really have anything else. I, I skipped over old business like very fast, but there wasn't anything under the agenda. I don't think anybody had something they needed to, to more clarification on that was old business. The date for that concert is February 5th on Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day, yeah. That's our next meeting day, too. Yes, it is. So you can come for a concert, for lunch, and a board meeting. <laughs> or a council meeting. And volunteer in the mail. Yes. yes, and that's right. <laughs> this is sounding good. <laughs> OK, so any other new business from members? We have a few more minutes that we could. We can. This is like we made it in more less than an hour. Amazing. Yeah. May I make a motion to adjourn? Yes, you may. Bob, second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?